Who the stiffest guy you ever wrestled? The stiffest. Oh, probably uh, Kawada. Um, our, and, and Kabashi could be at times. Uh, Kawada was was pretty snug. Uh, work, just liked working that way. He was a tough guy, and he liked working that way. Vader could work that way, but not always. Vader would always stiff you one, once or twice. Uh, I liked Leon. I liked him a lot. Yeah. I liked working with him. Uh, he man, he was a great worker, a terrific yeah. big man. But man, when he got ready for pay per views or big matches, uh, it was like being in a car crash. He 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 brought it. He he would really he hit you so hard you'd see w- bright lights. Oh, let me say, let me put her number. Who was the anybody worked stiff with you in in the U.S. American guy? Killer Tim Brooks. Yeah, Killer yeah. Tim Brooks. He would beat you half to death. I remember great, I worked with Killer Tim Brooks. Guy. Oh my goodness, what a great I loved heel. him. I loved oh, him. Oh, I used to ride with Killer. Uh I learned so much from Killer Tim Brooks about being a heel. He was one of the best heels I've ever seen. He and Murdoch yeah. were cousins. And yeah. uh he tagged with Brody. Uh, he was a great worker, but man, he was stiff. I mean, stiff. It was just it was ridiculous how <laughs> stiff he was. He would hit you so hard. And he had those little skinny knuckles and just <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he hit him back and he didn't care. He loved it. Oh, he didn't give a crap. He, no, didn't. he didn't care at all. He loved you to hit him back hard. He just, he lived for that. He lived to be out in the middle of the ring, draw a circle around you and just punch each other in the face. He, he thought that was the greatest night ever. You were, he was a good, I liked killer. I rode with killer and uh killer helped me out so many times. Uh, he funny was a funny guy. guy. Yeah. Real funny guy. Funny guy. You ever work with Hanson? Many times. Yeah. How was he? Because he Terrific. always looked stiff, but he's Stan was he, a good worker. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. I've often, I've often said, if you take a fan who doesn't know about pro wrestling, and he watched Hanson, or he watched Brody, or even watched you or Brooks, you know, if you tried to tell him these guys were working, he'd go, I don't know. If you try to tell him, it looked pretty damn legit to me and that's what they tried to do and oh. succeeded i might add i saw a match the other day with hansen and i think spivey tagging against i can't remember who it was it was doc and gordy or who it was and that was one of the most physical matches i've ever seen and i've been in those matches with with stan nothing's called in the back i've seen them do six man matches in japan and they're doing splashes off the top rope. Nothing was called. I mean, it's just it was just a masterpiece. And Stan could Stan had that cardio that he where he actually worked very hard on his cardio. He went a hundred percent from the time he left the curtain till the time time he came back. He said he always got that from Tiger Jeet Singh. That Jeet Singh would come out and be all constant motion. And Stan wanted to be like that. And if you were watched his matches, he was constant motion. There's nothing like being out in Budokan Hall. And seeing Stan Hansen coming out, romping and a stomping with that bull rope of flying and Japanese fans running everywhere. It was insane watching that. And he was great to work with. He had Barry Wendell with the clothesline one time. Barry comes back and his whole face is all messed up. His eyes bulged out. It's bloody. (laughs) And and, Stan Stan goes, Stan, what the hell? And Stan goes, thanks, Barry. And Stan goes, no, no, Stan, what the hell? Stan, Stan goes, what? Barry goes, Stan, put on your glasses. So he put on his glasses. He looked up at Barry. He goes, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> Stan was the best. I always thought he could see fine. I, I think that was all the work. Did you ever work with Brody? No, never got the privilege. Mm-hmm. Well, I always, he- man, what, you know, him, him and Stan were such a great tag team. They're both cut out of the same mold. It just uh, incredible. Uh, you know, we wish you Bruiser had been around a lot longer. I wish I had seen a match in Japan with Brody and Hanson in it. Because those people, I mean, you can't reproduce that. No. I mean, those people were running out out of fear. They literally feared these guys. Yeah. And they were big. They were rough. They looked wild. Uh, it, It was crazy. So, but I wish I'd have been over there. I was on one tour with Brody. But but not Hanson. I, I would I have loved to seen them together one time. Yeah, me too. 
Stan so, told me one time, and I asked him about it later, and he didn't remember telling me this. So I don't want to, you know, so if, but I, I do remember him saying it. He said one time they had Baba and they shot him off for a double tackle, and they both hit Baba and knocked him through the ropes. And Stan said at that point, he goes, I, I just thought we own Japan. Yeah. And they did. Those boys own Japan. Hmm. You know, a lot of people don't know those those little guys who run around the ring or we think of them as seconds, but they're really they're wrestlers too, right? Tough guys. That's right. Tough guys who've been through the dojo and uh, really they've been through hell. I mean, some inhumane treatment to those guys. There are some tough, tough guys paying their dues. When I was Japan. there working, uh, Animal Hamaguchi had a gym in uh, Wano Station we used to go to, and Fanaki was one of those uh, young guys. So if I, I remember meeting Fanaki when I was there, when he was one of Animal Hamaguchi's young trainees. I was looking at a guy one day, and his finger was missing. Then I said, okay, he had an accident. Then I'm looking around, and there was another guy with – Two fingers missing. I went, <laughs> that's that's odd. That's kind of a strange coincidence. Then I looked at one, and he had three fingers from here down, from that knuckle down, missing. I went, what the hell? And I finally asked somebody, and they said, well, if they screw up one time, <laughs> they just cut their little finger off here. They screw up again, they cut their other knuckle off. And then I'm thinking, man, the guy I saw must have been a real fuck up because <laughs> his damn near his whole hand was gone. It, it was crazy. Japan was just. Oh, you know, yeah. And I went over there for a group. I told this story the other day. I went over there for a group and it was that first like semi shoot group. Yeah. So, who was the uh, guy? It Texas? was a UWF. Something. And yeah. I went over there and I come back and I. I may have told you this story, James, and I sit down and I went, damn, these guys can't work. And one guy looked at me like, work? What? They didn't tell you? I said, tell me what? They said, this is like a, a semi-shoot group. I went, well, no shit. Then I got to thinking, hey, I may have won some of those fights had I known I was in one. I didn't <laughs> even know. But this, they would just beat the living shit out of you. And then you'd have to beat the living shit out of them, except you wouldn't hit them in the face or anything. And then down. And then you come back to the dress room, and it was like night and day. It's said, oh, thank you. Thank you <laughs> yeah. very much. Thank you very much. I went, shit. It, it was fucking crazy. So how many times oh. you go over there, John? Oh, I went over there almost every other month when I first started. I've been over there. I don't know how many times I, you know, I wish I'd kept count probably 15, 20 times. I'm guessing, I'm guessing. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Cause I went over there a lot. I went over there first for uh Sakurata, Kendo Nagasaki. Then I went for Tenru. Then the last went for uh, Baba, just one tour for Baba and only a few tours for Tenru. So I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 times, maybe 15, 20 is too much. I, I'm not sure. 